What's going on, people? Welcome to the Bituation Room podcast. So happy to have you here. Uh, I am smiling from ear to ear because we're going to have such a good show. Also, I don't know how I somehow ran out of time to do everything. You know when that happens? It's almost like when you triple multitask, you don't do things well. I'm plugging in my computer. Okay, people, that was okay sometimes when there's kind of, uh, my brain is automatically doing a bonus bish. But no, this is the main show, The Bituation Room. I'm Francesca Fiorentini. So good to have you here. So happy you decided to press play. This show is going to be fire. Uh, speaking of multitasking, I have a multi hyphenate uh, singer, songwriter, or I don't know if there's. Musician, filmmaker, podcast host, Lola Blanc is here. I just say singer songwriter, but she could clarify whether that is the case or not. Lola Blanc is here, uh, hosts a podcast about cults, and we're going to talk about Donald Trump today. So I feel like it's fitting. Also, speaking of Trump and what's going on in the realm of Republican politics, if it even still exists, Dave Weigel of Semaphore is here. He is obviously a political reporter with Semaphore, um, uh, formerly of the Washington Post and Slate. He's live from Iowa, people. The Iowa State Fair somehow is the most important point for Republican politics and maybe our national politics, which says a lot about how rat-fucked this whole nation is. But anyway, um, or hogtied or something something state fairy. I abandoned going to a state fair recently because I was like, I got tickets. I'm like, this will be fun. We'll go with the baby. It was, I just looked at the line to get in. I was like, no, you can keep my $29. Like I, that, yep. I kind of, I'm, yes, I parked three miles away to walk here and say, nope. And turn around, uh, definitely was not going to be surviving that with the baby. Um, so anyway, 
I don't, not a big fan of state fairs. Uh, so we're going to get into everything that's gone on, what's happening at that state, at the fair. Uh, how are the candidates doing? Were there any Democrats present? Um, did anyone break into a, a rap? You know, did anyone rap to Eminem? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So we'll find out who. Uh, and then we're going to end up, and this is part of that rap, we're going to end up talking about, uh, uh, well, speaking of singer-songwriters, it's very debatable whether this person is even a songwriter, but uh, latest right-wing sensation, uh, Oliver Anthony, um, who has a song, something, something, I love living in the Confederacy, or like, why don't slaves exist anymore? Like one of the, I forgot what the song is called. We'll get into it. We're going to talk about uh, which of these moments, musical moments in the last week have been the cringiest. So an episode, an edition of the cringies. That's right. Uh, and of course, we're going to get into a little bit of what's going on in Maui um, and the fallout from all that. And very, uh, it, it's devastating and we should absolutely be continuing to talk about it as Hawaii tries to uh, rebuild. Um, so with that, hey, you know what to do. It's your time to shine right now. you liking the things. You're clicking the buttons. You're giving the podcast five stars on iTunes right now or on Apple Podcasts, which I guess is more, it's actually what it's called. And you're becoming a patron of this show, patreon.com slash bituation room, which gets you a massive back catalog of all of our bonus bishes, plus access to the bonus bish as soon as it drops. Uh, and when I say as soon as it drops, I mean like an hour after I've recorded, I will upload the video to the Patreon, y'all. So don't you worry your pretty little heads. If you're not a member on YouTube and you are a patron, which I definitely prefer, although loved all the members as well, definitely prefer you to be a patron. It will be uploaded within momentarily. And then within a day, and I'm sorry, it can't always be sooner, within a day, It'll be out as an audio. So if you want to know what we've been talking about, sometimes it's ridiculous things, random ass stories, um, medieval or ancient objects shaped like dicks uh, that somehow were venerated and both is used as weapons, but also like, you know, religious symbols. Uh, we talked about that. But last week we talked about um, a millionaire donor to the left named Roy Singham who is kind of a, a tanky, you know, pro-China, um, not mouthpiece, but benefactor, right? So he has been donating to a lot of progressive left causes and in turn has gotten some soft peddling around issues of Chinese human rights, the Uyghur population and whatnot. And so uh, Tabita Chow, who's been on this show before speaking about U.S.-China relations from a ground up movement based perspective, he was on the program, as well as Alexander Reed Ross, who himself has done a lot of the digging uh, into the financial sources for some of these organizations, um, you know, including some of the people and, and mouthpieces uh, who've been whitewashing like Assadist war crimes um, and all that. So we had a great chat. It was a, a robust hour, and I encourage everyone to become a patron to listen back to that. I'm going to put a little teaser if I find the time in the next 24 uh, out on the main feed. So make sure you get access to that because it was kind of a, it was a massive New York Times piece. And there was a response from the left or these groups specifically that were named that was like, this is a red scare. This is same shit. You know, Marco Rubio came out and was like, we need to investigate these organizations. So it, it's, it's not a cut and dry topic. And I think it's important for us to dig into those nuances. So definitely check that out. Patreon.com slash habituation room. And remember, you can also tip the show TBR-Live on Venmo, TBR-Live on Cash App. And a couple, one more announcement. I'm going to be at the Punchline in San Francisco on Tuesday, October 17th with my husband, Matt Lieb. We're co-headlining on a Tuesday. It's going up. It'll be super fun. Get tickets. Most of my jokes are about, about him. So that's great. But yeah, get tickets. There's a link right now in the description. Uh, should be a link also in the podcast if you're looking, listening to this or licking this as a podcast. Um, thank you so much for being here. And let's get into it. I'm going to bring in my guest. And then we're going to go to what you're bitching about. This is, this is different. She's a filmmaker and a musician and a singer-songwriter. I just, 
can I call her a singer song? God damn it. She also co-hosts a podcast called Trust Me, a podcast about cults, and her single called Trust Me is out now, and her 2023 film Pruning is out very, very, very soon. Please welcome Lola Blanc. Hello. What's up? Hi. Hello. You can call me a singer-songwriter. I am both of those things, but Hell yeah. thank you for trying to be precise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I was just like, if <laughs> I were a singer or a song, first of all, if I were just a singer, I would just add songwriter. Which sure. I know you're not supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them do it anyway. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, well, I'm very excited for uh, our your review of the music we're going to be hearing later on in the program. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but let's get into this this first segment, which is what are you bitching about? <laughs> Lola Blanc, what has crawled up your craw and died? Listen, it's coming from TikTok. It always is coming from TikTok, if okay. we're being completely <laughs> honest. Um, there are there's a whole faction of TikTok that is obsessed with beauty and you know, hacking your body to be as beautiful as possible. And they are oh. now fixated on the trap muscles. Wait, I just read about this. <sighs> Put well, like any in your traps. Okay, explain. Okay, okay. So this is well, where are your traps again? God, I should they're, probably. They're work right them here. Out. I should have worn a shirt that shows my my um your tra your, traps. Your just incredible to traps. Give an example, but um, apparently the thinking is that traps are too masculine if you have any trap muscles, and so you should Botox them so that they relax and so that you look more like a delicate. So they're not if flower. you're like if you're too like broad across or straight across you got to go it's got to be like down like a little like yes helpless little like you're wilting and you need yes you need help i hate it so much i didn't realize that see i read the article and when i learn about tiktok trends it's only because the washington post writes about them and that's how the sure, millennial sure. <laughs> the sad instagram millennial gets their tiktok news but yeah <laughs> Um, so, right. I thought it was like, so you could have more bone, like clavicle, but no, it's, it's about be looking, appearing more slight by more having your shoulders go down. I, listen, I'm not, I, I don't know. It could be both, but yes, the, to be more feminine, to be smaller. Um, and in, re in response, I really want to build my trap muscles up actually, and look yes. as, look as much like a bodybuilder as possible. Cause why are we inventing things to be insecure about that are not a thing? They're just not yeah. a thing. Who is doing it? Who's, yeah, yeah. who's making us think this? No, it, uh, that's, and it, I think I wa I saw this and it was like, look at me before and after. I was like, no difference. It's literally have no idea what you're doing here. Um, but I will say that Gen Z definitely like got me to start reparting my hair in the middle, even though ironically, that's also where my grays sprout from. <laughs> so... I don't know what you call this bind, Lola, that I am in, but it was just like, like, fuck, I can't go back to the side part because Gen Z won't like me. Oh, I miss skinny jeans. I wish I was allowed to wear skinny jeans without getting made fun of, but I'm not. I have to wear mom jeans or whatever. <laughs> Boyfriend jeans. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm fully on board with that. I'm not on board with what's trying to come back now, which the which is the massive like long bell bottomy like you know like I just remember that throughout all of high school in the '90s like I my jeans were just wet all the time on the bottom <laughs> because they were just too long and like dragging places like what the right. fuck and that's coming back now? No, I'm not into it. Listen, oh, yeah. we transcend trends, you know, like we are we're timeless, <laughs> classic. <laughs> It's a good thing to bitch about. I mean, f f yes, finding random ways to feel insecure. Uh, I do feel like as a new mom, I hope the generation of my child is one that's just like fucking primitive. Like I want them to be so disgusted with us that she like <laughs> finds my makeup and like throws it down the toilet, but on purpose, not like in a toddler way. Sure, sure. Um, and is like, like grows out her armpit hair and like braids it around her like <laughs> flabby arms. <laughs> like I want like that. That's what I want. I think it's going to happen. There's a rebellion happening. You know, kids are like throwing their phones away. They want yes. artists that are not big on TikTok now as the new thing I'm hearing that are so like they're discovering oh. them. Oh, they want to. Oh, they didn't want to do. They want to actually do work. That's great. Tell that to the fucking. What is it? Some the clear channel that is our radio waves just like 
the radio fucking sucks in this country. There's like oh, a yeah. station that's okay. But anyway, <laughs> um, kids almost on the radio. It's fine. Uh, I am, let's see, I'm bitching about something. This is very quick, but I am bitching about the fact that we now have to, by we, I mean most news outlets have to refer to Twitter as <sighs> X, formerly known as Twitter. And that is all I'm reading. It's just X, formerly known as Twitter, like Prince, right? X. Like symbol, formerly known as Prince. And like that's like Prince can do whatever the fuck he wants or wanted. But I don't like e with X. Like I just, it's another way that Elon steals a piece of your soul. Oh my God. Do we have to say FKA? Like it'd be faster to say FKAT? X, FKAT? No, it's not. It's not even that much faster. What's FKA? FKA is formerly known as like so. Oh, FKA right, 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 right. is formerly known as. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't. I I forgot letters for half a second. You're right. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's bad. I can't believe X is still a. Th <sighs> I just... It's so stupid, and the logo is so ugly. Who does? Who who is? I mean, it's Elon. It's all Elon. I know. It, no, it's really bad. It doesn't move. Like, make it, like, 3D. Make it look... Do something that looks cool, right? Like, I mean, like, I, I guess to some people, the Cybertruck looks cool. Not to me. That looks like <laughs> a fucking fire death trap. Um, but anyway, that is the small, silly thing. I'm glad we're starting off real light because we're going to get into some heavy stuff. Um, because there's only one thing... Look, I was going to have us talk about the blind side uh, and how uh, the football player and a former NFL football player from the blind side how his parents actually didn't adopt him they were just his conservator um and i was like that's crazy but then donald trump got indicted so let's jump into it you guys this is the week where well it happened donald trump got indicted for it one two three Fourth time. Uh, yeah, I I need to get some Costco champagne or something. Whatever Rudy's drinking, give me some of that. Um, I don't want to feel anything. Uh, no, but the Rico case out of Georgia is coming down. Obviously, this is in Fulton County from DA Fonnie Willis, uh, whose name I think I've been pronouncing Fanny. <sighs> and I'm sorry, because I guess that's the MAGA way, but sorry. Uh Anyway, so it, it has arrived, and I uh, there's there's just some fun tidbits that I want to go through, Lola. But first, uh, here is Fonnie Willis uh, describing the indictment, which, by the way, these indictments came down uh, from a grand jury. So not necessarily from her, but from this jury. Today, based on information developed by that investigation, a Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in this state. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. Please remember that everyone charged in this bill of indictment is presumed innocent. Sure, yes, presumed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally innocent. All of the, there's like this 97, I got, I'm going to be real with y'all. I got like a fourth of the way through and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same shit, but no, it is. The, it is a lot of uh, calls asking state legislators uh, to try and send alternate slates of electors to call assembly meetings. Um, a lot of governor putting the squeeze is basically putting the squeeze on a bunch of mofos and 19 people in total. Again, this is a RICO case. Um, and so they are basically all included in all of these charges. This is not like you get this, you get that. It's like all of these things. Um, I believe that's how it works. And she called them out by name, which was very funny. It was like Rudolph. <laughs> like it was like Rudolph Penelope. It's not Penelope. But I want to call him Rudolph. We should only call him Rudolph. It should be Rudolph. Rudolph Penelope Lewis Giuliani. I, I, the middle one's like Alexander or something like that. Um, mm. 
which is like, first of all, the best middle name is Robinette. Like we know Biden has the best middle names, which is funny because like everyone else tries. But Biden Robinette, uh, Joe Bidenette, uh, Joe Robinette Biden, that's how names work. That's the best name. I didn't know that name. I didn't know Robinette. his middle name. Wow, it's pretty good. I mean, he's got them beat. Also, he is he is oversees a massive crime family, much bigger than Trump's. But anyway, so this is what it was. 97 pages, a lot of unindicted co-conspirators, name, not named, but mentioned, meaning these were probably people who cooperated. They were cooperating witnesses. Um, and again, they have so many incidents um, of conspiracies to, um, you know, defraud the American people, to um, for forgery, to stealing voter data to stealing machines. That was the work of Sidney Powell. Um, and then that Misty Hampton figure, who's a former election supervisor in Coffee County, where we saw there was video of that. Kathy Latham, uh, uh, this bitch was on her fucking phone, like playing Candy Crush while like dudes were just taking out like computers, like it was all good. She basically let everyone into that Coffee County, um, uh, like voting state like office, basically. Um, Ruby uh, Freeman, right? The 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 interfering the the election worker stuff. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Defaming and and like inciting all kinds of violence, telling lies about about Ruby Freeman and her daughter. So like, they got a lot of stuff. There was a lot going on. Um, and uh, uh oh, this is crazy. And it what's crazy about this is that like we knew a lot of it already, and um. You know, like, for example, this this was just funny because it was part of it was like Act 32, um, <laughs> part of the indictment on or about the sixth day of December 2020. Everything's on or about a certain day, um, which, by the way, they had a terrible holiday season. Like you read the indictment, you're like, God, fuck, eat some fucking turkey. Um, Donald Trump tweeted, gee, what a surprise. Has anyone informed the so-called says he has no power to do anything? Governor Brian Kemp, GA, that his puppet lieutenant governor, Jeff Duncan, GA, that they could easily solve this mess and win signature verification and call a special session. So easy. This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. It was. <laughs> This was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. You just laid it out right there. We're going to call a special session. We're going to overturn the will of the Georgia voters. We're going to do it right there. Like, it's not like he was hiding, Lola. It's He was not hiding. And also, can we just talk about how caused to be tweeted is my favorite phrase? <laughs> <laughs> It caused to be tweeted. It's so good. Um, Which is like, what does that mean? Like, he didn't actually tweet it. Was this not like from <laughs> the source? Or he? That we is know funny. he. We know. But it's also like a little bit of a dig at like. At least she didn't say cause to be exed. Formerly caused to, to be, be tweeted. Ex. <laughs> no. Did you re ex my ex, bro? What the X are you talking about? All right, I'm done. Um, so, so right. These are these are things that he was openly talking about. My favorite part also is that all of these fools, uh, all of them now, they're not a squad. They're not the team. They're not, you know, a basket of deplorables, as she said. <laughs> they're an enterprise, people. Hell yeah. The criminal organization constituting an enterprise. As that term is defined in the OCGA 1614.33, that is a group of individuals associated, in fact, the defendants and other members and associates of the enterprise had connections and relationships with one another and with the enterprise. The enterprise is constituted in an ongoing organization whose members and associates functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving the objectives of the enterprise. The enterprise operated in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia, in other states, including but not limited to Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, in the District of Columbia. The enterprise operated for a period of time sufficient to permit its members and associates to pursue its objectives of overturning an election. They always seemed like mobsters, talked like mobsters, acting like mobsters, and now they're getting treated like mobsters with the law. And it makes me very happy. Yeah. Uh, same. Um, <clears throat> I feel like they, they're going to like put this on their LinkedIn though. Or like, actually, I'm part of the Trump 
the enterprise. enterprise. <laughs> so no big deal. Like Jenna Ellis already updated her uh, business cards. Jenna Ellis was also indicted. In fact, the meeting where she, I think it was in Pennsylvania, she and Rudy are presenting, you know, their case to the public uh, and in which he like farted and she kind of like made a set face like that. That's also documented in the indictment. It's very fun. Very, very fun. Uh, apparently, however, um, because this is in Georgia, uh, this is not a federal case. Uh, this is in Georgia. That means there will be mugshots, people. And here is the Fulton County Sheriff explaining that. We are following our part, our, our normal practices. And so it doesn't matter your status. We, we have mugshots ready for you. <laughs> there was a little smile there if you're just listening. Doesn't matter your status. We have mugshots waiting for you. Hell yeah. Uh, all of them. That's 19 mugshots in total. Um, and this is the first time they're all getting, uh, this is the first time it's not just Trump, right? This, the co-conspirators are also being charged. Absolutely. This. These yeah. are all 19 of them. This is that RICO case. I mean, look, one of the most damning parts of the indictment is what I referenced earlier, but the unlawful breach of election equipment in Georgia and elsewhere, members of the enterprise including several defendants corruptly conspired in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to unlawfully access secure voter inf voting information and voter data. They stole data, including ballot images, voting equipment, software, personal information. Stolen data was then distributed to other members of the enterprise, including members in other states. And uh, that's in reference to Coffee County, um, which, which, as I mentioned earlier, Kathy and Misty and all those fools were at, which was 70% Republican. Lola, like all they already won. Like, what are you going to do? Why do you realize how right. elections, do you know how elections work? Like, so, but it was interesting through the indictment. You see the calls that were made to Pennsylvania. Okay. The calls that were made to Nevada, the calls that were made to Arizona, like all of the swing states, all of the ways, all of the gears, all of the pressure. Um, and none of it bore out to say nothing of guys. Remember 42 lawsuits that these fool, the enterprise, the Enterprise lost. <laughs> All right. Deep Space Loser. That's a fucking, sorry, I don't know. Starship Enterprise. I don't watch Star Trek. Me neither. Yeah. But Sounds I, right. I, I feel like I will get into it. I just need mono. You know what I mean? If you just give me mono or COVID for another time, I'll watch it. Um, I, I did get into it one season when I was super sick and sleeping in the bathroom every night, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's how I got into, well, the pandemic got me into Downton and I was like, why have I been sleeping on this show that my mom knows more about than me? Um, so good. It's the best. So anyway, uh, the other thing, Mehdi Hassan of MSNBC or Peacock reminding us uh, that state crimes cannot be pardoned by a president in D.C., meaning if Trump is elected, duh, he's could still, he can't pardon any of this shit. Um, and also uh, in Georgia, even the GOP governor lacks the power to pardon. And just for funny rights, trials are televised in Georgia. So we're going to oh, see so a lot of tears. I mean, and the it, fact. No, mm -hmm. you go. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, Fani has about a, she, she's looking at six months for the start of this trial, this RICO case. Um, the fact that it would have to potentially be coming from the state in order for a president to not pardon himself is so wild. Anyone mm -hmm. could just pardon themselves of a crime unless it's a unless it's charged by the state. It just makes no sense. Well, when when you elect the goodest of all Americans, Lola, <laughs> then oh. de, then they become all the bad goes away. Right. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jesus was a sinner. I mean, I haven't read that book lately, but I believe <laughs> he, when he became the top sinner, he mm. became the Messiah. Mm. Totally makes sense. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> anyway, we will see. This is huge. There's, I just, the tech, the group chat. I mean, the group chat must be lit over the enterprises group chat must be so just like fucking just angry gifts, you know, oh, um, yeah. a, a lot of like head explode emojis. Do you uh, think don't they have a group chat. It must be too scary to have a group chat at this moment in time. 
But if it, did, but I want to see it if it's there. No, this is the group chat is just a massive like Russian roulette. Like everyone's wearing a fucking wire. No one is taking anyone's <laughs> lunch dates. Yeah. Just like so. <laughs> How Not about that charges. indictment? <laughs> uh huh. Well, that was crazy. They had that one phone call. I don't own a phone. What are you talking <laughs> about? Like the just. Oh my God! The, yeah, the circular firing squad is is going to be incredible. Obviously, Trump is saying he has some alternate like some alternate report that's going to be presented very soon that's going to exonerate everybody um but it's we will be the see the most truth the most truth we've ever seen oh, the truthiest truth um i'm excited to bring in dave in a little bit to see what he thinks of because there's one name that is missing from the indictment and kind of been missing from the whole scheme in and of itself which is mike pence and he was he was very much implored uh and it specifies that in the indictment to accept these alternate slate of electors to like throw down with the ski with the enterprise and he didn't want to join um so how is that playing or not playing in iowa we shall see but let's let's pivot real quick um hang on i'm getting word yeah 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 oh we're gonna do this real quick um this was the week where um, Hawaii and the whole nation is reeling from the deadliest wildfire in U.S. history since 1918. Um, the fires in Maui have claimed 99 lives so far with dozens of bodies like found every single day. Um, the governor today says there are 1,300 people still unaccounted for. Um, FEMA has been deployed. Biden has not yet visited. He has deployed FEMA. There has been an official statement, and I believe he was asked on the beach what he thinks and he said something like no comment which the right is freaking out about it's probably the wrong move to say mm. no comment mm -hmm. maybe it's just say my heart breaks you know yeah. do a do a biden he was much more of a robinette that day i guess so he was you know I, it's funny because this gets this got reported and it's not really clear maybe maybe i'm just missing it but like not really clear like who asked him might have just been like some random like um, random outlet, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a random outlet, say something better, but it doesn't matter. Uh, let's go into what actually happened. So this is Lahaina. Lahaina is a historic, uh, a historic town in Maui, in Hawaii. Um, and this is the main street that used to be like a thoroughfare, a, a boardwalk, beautiful. I've actually been there and it's gone. It's completely burned. Um, Folks just walking in the street. Obviously, we know people had to jump into the water in order to survive um, and escape the flames. The d fire only ended when there was no more to burn. So it ended at the ocean. The extent of the damage is still coming into focus. This is according to the Times, but it already is huge. 1,500 residential buildings destroyed. Thousands of people displaced. Nearly 100 found dead so far. And the heart of a community that, is in, that has long been the gem of Hawaiian history is reduced to ashes. Uh, this was very interesting because a lot of people were like, how the hell did it get so out of control so quickly? Um, so it seems like fire crews basically ran into water pressure issues. So they were going to hydrants. And this said, as the inferno stoked by the hurricane force gusts grew, roaring further towards the historic center of town on the island of Maui, the hydrant sputtered and became largely useless. There was just no water in the hydrants, said Kiahi Ho, one of the firefighters who was on duty in Lahaina, which is insane. Um, and it's also like, as someone, I've been to Maui, like I went to like the touristy side, I went to like Kihei and it's touristy as fuck. And you see how all the water is diverted from the mountain and, and like basically to residential areas, to, excuse me, to tourist areas, to the hotels, to the grass, to the flowers, mm. so that like tourists, like my dumb ass can go and be like, yay, it's pretty, you know? But meanwhile, in most, in a lot of part of Maui, which used to be a sugar plantation, thanks to, you know, the colonization of Hawaii, after the sugar plantation stopped effectively, a bunch of non-native grass was planted and brought to Maui. This grass is incredibly uh, volatile when it comes to, and susceptible to wildfires. Maui was already under like a massive wildfire watch. There was just a divestment. There was just massive divestment. And 
it makes sense. I mean, it's interesting that it was Lahaina because Lahaina is not a, a town known for big old hotels, right? It's it's native Hawaiians and folks who are running local businesses. And when I think I read that also the grass that is non native to the area um, is unlikely to grow back. Whereas like in California, we, when we have fires, like it will probably grow back because our climate, our environment is adapted to that climate. So it's, it, it's unlikely to react in the same way. So it's even more devastating than as, how devastating it already is. Right. Right. And yeah, and to say nothing of like the corporations who are landowners there, it's not like once the sugar plantations, you know, stopped. They were like, let's redistribute land. But right. that did not happen. Right. Um, so obviously now a lot of, you know, activists, leaders, uh, Jason Momoa, who like, whatever you say, dog, I will do. <laughs> um, just let me stare into your eyes. Like they want all tourists to stay away, which makes sense. And I think in general, it's like, yep. You know, in Oahu, I know, like, Airbnbs were outlawed. It's like, yeah, good, because they're fucking displacing people, um, just like they're displacing people everywhere. Yeah, and people were swimming in the water, like, a few days after bodies were found in the water, which is just like, I, as a tourist, w like, wouldn't you even just not want to be found doing that? Like, it's so wildly disrespectful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like do the equivalent of posting a black square on Instagram. Right. Karen. Like <laughs> right. Calm, calm down. Like, yeah. So to your point, this is from insider. This was a, a, a resident who says you don't have our people. You don't see our people swimming, snorkeling, surfing. Nobody's having fun in a tragedy and continuing their lives. Like nothing happened. She said, there's two Hawaii's right now. There's the Hawaii we live in and there's the Hawaii they're living in. They're visiting it. And, and to some extent, that's always been the case. Right. Um, but even more pronounced now. The craziest part, let's just just lastly on this Maui stuff, is that there's been a video spreading um, of like a lightning bolt, what looks like a bolt of lightning hitting a, uh, hitting a house. So here's a little photo of it. It's like bolts of lightning hitting the house and it's gone viral. Um, it's been spread by this guy named Matt Wallace on X, formerly known as Twitter, kill me. Um, and it's basically like, guess what? Guess what? The Maui fire was started by George Soros? No. Uh, the elite, which is kind of a, I mean, it's a code word anyway. But they, it was be the elites because Oprah Winfrey has a luxury mansion in Maui. Bezos has a mansion in Maui. Gaga has a mansion. Bill Gates, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, totally part of the Illuminati. Will Smith, Julie Roberts. How did the fire know to avoid most expensive mansions? Wake up. Now this dude, like that tweet, this video I'm talking about, that's been spreading like, well, wildfire, ironically. Um, and it got 20,000 retweets, 54,000 likes, 10 million views before being community noted. Um, and it's actually not from Maui. That video is from an explosion in McCall, Chile, which is actually what happens when a transformer explodes is that little sort of beam there. There. I saw that. First of all, when you look it up on Twitter, the, all of the top tweets about the fires are conspiracy theories, which I'm shocked. But wow. Biden had t tweeted, he had X'd, saying that we're laser focused on getting aid to survivors um, and people are honing in on the laser focus. And saying, stay on the Azer lay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do pig Latin jokes, guys. No, it was like, we're well, But that's, that's a pretty, that, that calls for a pig Latin joke. Um, so they're latching onto that and saying, see, he shot a laser and purposely started a fire. But look, because it has to be, because it can't just be like, that's the thing about conspiracy theories. They're shortcuts. Yeah. I wish things were so, and you t cover this all the time when you talk about cults, right? It's yeah. like, yeah, it's a shortcut for your world. Here you go. It's not decade legacies of colonialism, neglect, capitalism. These are systems too difficult. These are histories too much to comprehend. Mm -hmm. What about laser from thing? Go poo poo or pew pew. <laughs> it's funny. It's like they're close. Like it's rich. They're they're going rich people are conspiring to shoot lasers. And it's like it's rich people, but it's like corporations. Like you're we so close. <laughs> your <laughs> laser. Yeah, it's very much like a, yeah, you <laughs> I don't know what the analogy is, but you just kind of like, yeah, want to reroute 
<laughs> the, the, the baby or the horse to the water. It's yeah. Like, oh, there's water. Like, oh, but there's shit here. Let me eat the shit. No, drink the water, <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, but sending massive love to Hawaii and to Maui particularly, and, uh, everyone needs to donate. I have, uh, I will continue to do so. Um, and I hope that the rebuilding is rebuilding with justice and not, you know, again, in the service of the corporations and or lasers, whatever, whatever you want to fuck with. Anyway, um, with that, let's bring in to talk about everything that's going on in Iowa. Did you guys know there's a state fair that determines American democracy? Yeah, see, if you're foreign uh, or if you're me, you didn't know this. <laughs> but a uh, political reporter from Semaphore, Dave Weigel, is here to explain it all. What's up, Dave? Hey, how's it going? Good. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Okay. No, it, it's good. I've been at the fair for six days. I, I just left. So this is the first I've talked to people who aren't eating something. Wow. <laughs> Just in between bites of chili dog. <laughs> Including me. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to judge anyone. Are okay, there so deep fried sticks of butter? Have I was just going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are vintage now. The, the new thing was a, a Iowa Twinkie, which has no sugar in it. It's just a bunch of meat products. And there was a, 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 pork, a pork belly, um, what do they call it? Pinwheel, which is just a large amount of pork belly spun in a circle. That was that was one of the new things. I could go right. on, but there's other things going on. But I definitely I definitely <laughs> studied this. I was there for a long time. What a metaphor for our current sort of political <laughs> circus, which is a pork belly spinning around in a circle. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just briefly, like, what? Why is the Iowa State Fair so important uh, in presidential elections? And you know, are are like who goes to it? What kind of people are even out there? Well, it's important because Iowa is important because Republicans kept Iowa first. Democrats didn't. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy and Mar Marion Williamson showed up at the, at the state fair, but Joe Biden didn't. Democrats are, are kind of quietly kind of embarrassed about how the last caucus went. Uh, but for Republicans, it's still the first contest. There's, there's a few weeks between Iowa and New Hampshire this year. And everybody except, um, really except Chris Christie, who's doing his own thing, is running in New Hampshire. Every, every other Republican is, is, is focused on that because they want to, if they can't beat Trump, that's their dream. Uh, come in the top three, get to the next few states, and find a way to beat them from there. There's there's no yes. way to do that. You can't you can't like flop in Iowa and do that. That's it's impossible. You can you can unless you're Joe Biden, the Democrats. But again, forget the Democrats <laughs> right now. It's not relevant for them. This is all Republicans. The sort of voters who are showing up. I mean, there are liberals there. It's politically a little bit mixed, uh, but it was much more Republican. Uh, it, it, it I guess like T-shirt politicking than I've seen in the past. You saw <laughs> lots of kind of. Ho uh, DIY Trump gear, DIY anti-Biden gear, uh, a lot of patriotic stuff with, you know, the American flag made out of bullets or AR-15s. Mm. Uh, a little more, a little more. I mean, if you just do a political scan of Iowa, it looked like that. It looked like a state that's trending, trending more Republican. So a lot of interest in the Republicans people had known about or heard about. Right, right. They want to start strong. Everyone wants mm. to be, I mean, number two. So, like, let's talk about Trump first. Um, he's still completely overshadowing everybody else leading to Santis, I guess, by double digits still. Um, but, like, how did that feel? Did it feel, did, did everyone feel sort of, like, genuinely, yeah, Trump, Trump, Trump? Or was it kind of like, I guess we have to Trump, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It, 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 that's the good thing about being there is you, can, you hear these opinions, you can follow up with people. Uh, you saw a lot of organic Trump support. Some of it was organized by the campaign, but they organized people who wanted to be there. So right. Trump only was there for about an hour, maybe less. He, he only stopped at three parts of the fair. Uh, you, you can walk around if you want to. You can walk around and be followed by reporters as you go from, you know, the, the rides to one of the, 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 the animal livestock areas to the food. Uh, Trump just went to the pork industry tent where he didn't cook anything. Everyone else cooked something. This, this is important. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just do the bare minimum. Uh, he, he went to uh, one of the animal, the livestock areas. Then he went to this bar. His campaign had put down a $10,000 top a tab at, uh, that lasted it, all day. The, I mean, like mm -hmm. what a fucking no brainer move. <laughs> yeah. That was probably the smartest thing any single candidate did. Just, there was a line out the door to be there for, for the Trump party. And there were Trump, specials like anti-inflation specials being sold at, at this bar Stierenstein. uh he showed up he spoke for really not that long he added a, a, all his words together five minutes and then he let the rest of the time he had this 
phalanx of famous Florida Republicans like Matt Gates uh, and Anna Polina Luna coming in to talk about how great Donald Trump was. And he would give them the mic and they'd say, this guy's amazing. And then he'd take the mic back, et cetera. He dominated with that. I mean, everywhere he, everywhere, you know, there was a rumor of him going, uh, you heard about him. And Ron DeSantis got a crowd. Everyone else got a crowd who, who you've heard of, who you'd expect. Everyone was chased by a ton of media because the usual thing here is how, how do you interact in a, in a crowded setting with lots of people who can vote for you, lots of people who want your attention? Right. Um, that, they've been more cautious. There was less, less eating. Again, it sounds silly, but so many people had embarrassed themselves just ju- biting into a corn dog and, look, and looking silly. Oh, yeah. No one did that. There was not, not, no one didn't want to be in a goofy photo. Everyone else t- treated it like a, you know, like a retail event. Like they do this all the time. I mean, it's instead of going to a diner, I'm in a place with a uh, hundred thousand people uh, over the course of a day baking in the sun. Right. Uh, did like DeSantis that, like eat a days. corn on the cob with like a fork and knife and just like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody like, saw me eat anything. He, although <laughs> my colleague Shelby Tocat from Semaphore was at the egg, the egg booth where he put eggs on sticks and just Ooh. the campaign did not include a video of him putting eggs on sticks into it's like roundup of highlights. Uh, <laughs> but but it, you, they gave speeches, uh, or I shouldn't say speeches, they gave remarks to the governor of Iowa, Kim Reynolds, who was having her this kind of friendly soapbox thing. There's, yeah. a, there's a Des Moines Register soapbox where you give a 20-minute speech, you take questions, then you take questions to reporters. He skipped that, Trump skipped that, Tim Scott skipped that. Everyone else did that, and they got some trolling. Um, but not, nothing, nothing fatal. But it was very clear that Donald Trump made people excited. And, and then when you talk to people at the fair... Uh, there were a lot of diehard Trump fans who could not be moved. I mean, there were people following around Mike Pence and heckling him. But there were a lot of people who said they loved Trump. They intended to support him. They were kind of worried about this indictment stuff, but they assumed it was fake. And they were gettable. Like, you can see why every, every Republican consultant, everyone work, every other candidate looks at this and says, there, there might be a moment when people can yeah. break from this guy. You did hear that a lot. You heard a lot of people saying, yeah, I love Trump, but also I'm really interested in these other people. Now, that he might mean they're seems- for VP. Yeah, because it kind of seems like a, for lack of a better term, like a like a politics nerd thing. Like, mm-hmm. if you're like really into politics and you all, I mean, obviously there's fun, sounds like there's semi fun stuff, but you're also like, you're shopping, you know, as mm-hmm. someone who's in California, Lola, I think you're in California too. Like, you know, I fucking wish that a candidate would give a fuck about my vote <laughs> like that. Like, yeah, whereas like you go to New Hampshire, like, yeah, I shook Hillary Clinton's hand. Yeah, I talked to Barack Obama. And you're like, what like they care about you but it's it's when the red carpet is rolled out for voters it's just fascinating and and i think they take advantage of it um but yeah that's interesting the folks were worried about indictments because it you know you you see the highlight reel of like klepper or like the the good liars going out and getting like Mm. the nut jobs just saying like the nuttiest thing was it you've been covering american politics during the trump years for a long time so it's like yeah how, how unhinged in comparison. Oh, I mean, there were people, <laughs> there was a moment, I mentioned Pence is getting heckled, and there were some people in Trump gear, they had these green hats that said back-to-back Iowa champs, because he won Iowa for, you know, against Hillary, and he won against Biden, and uh, Pence went into this radio station, they were waiting outside for him kind of menacingly, and they started talking to reporters, and one of them was, was saying, like, I want the candidate with the most indictments, the most impeachments, like, the, oh the one who the deep state like, hates the most. You heard some of that, but what you heard, and it was a flip. So when I was covering Democrats in 2019, I would hear a lot. Somebody would say, like, oh, I love Bernie, or I love Warren, or I love Buttigieg, but I'm worried that the, that white guy in Michigan, or, like, my cousin won't like them as much, so I have to right. vote for the electable candidate. And the version of that you hear from uh, Republicans in Iowa is, well, I love Trump, but I have a cousin who can't stand him and he, he he's a republican but he can't stand trump so maybe we need somebody who has more appeal like that's the version here it's less less i couldn't vote for him and more i know somebody who finds him irritating and i'm worried about that because yeah good yeah yeah like they'll say they think trump won the election but you follow up on that and people say like they're worried that there'll be some amount of theft and uh, i mean it's almost there's this um i forget who said this but there was this Republican line about how they need to win, above, I think it was New Cambridge, like above the margin of voter fraud. Like, assume Democrats are stealing some of the votes. You have to win by so much that they can't steal it. And some people internalize it and said, well, I'd love a candidate who, if Democrats only steal, like, 5 million votes, who can still win? <laughs> like, <laughs> Trump would lose. Oh, God. Yeah. Did you then tell them about the popular vote, Dave? <laughs> oh, they don't care about popular vote. Nobody <laughs> cares. Also, in Iowa, I just, I mean... It, this is, a thing, I think, not a problem for DeSantis. Both, both 
the thing that affects his campaign is he if he goes to California, he can rag on California. I can say, look how closed you know Disney World. Disneyland was closed. Disney World was open. I was pretty open during the pandemic. I was unemployment super low. I mean, there are a bunch of like people are getting kicked off of Medicaid and all, and those things. If you're like if you're a conservative, though, you're you've been pretty happy in Iowa in the last in the last few years. Right. And as and as far as you know, Donald Trump is super popular because he won by eight points. So right, if you've got people, money, yeah. things are okay. Mm-hmm. But tell me, so yeah, let's talk about DeSantis. Yeah. Because I know there was a plane flying over uh, the fair that said, uh, be likable, Ron, which was. There was. Um, That was paid for by the Trump campaign. Yeah. There you go. So buy buy a plane, pick up the tab. Obviously, they fund this by swindling seniors um, (laughs) out of their money every time the new indictment drops. But yeah, tell me about Ron. Did you see some like Ron heads? What are Ron heads like? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're people who love everything Trump did and think that there's like a bigger majority you can win. They like Vivek Ramaswamy too. There is this attitude that uh, everyone, more people agree with us than will admit it. We just need somebody who has is dynamic and is younger and is, is, mm. is ready to go and has, in the DeSantis face, will bring up his, uh, b- both Vivek and DeSantis have, you know, young kids and, and like fa- no- normal nuclear families and all this, all this stuff. Uh, they're just Trump guys in 2020 who think that someone else can can take the torch from him, yeah. or they like them so much that they think they should be vi- vi- vice president. But like Ron, Ron guys, I mean, because I mean, so, you, know, you try to talk to people who are not peacocking and wearing a ton of merch. But I, of one course. guy I ran into had a 10 percent for the big guy shirt, you know, an anti Biden shirt, um, and he loved he loved DeSantis specifically because he's like, yeah, I know friends in Florida, and they they said it was it was great there. I know I know I know people who went to Iowa from Illinois in the pandemic to escape. Like the, that's Florida story six sticks with you, but also the and idea. Then they got COVID and they can... died. But anyway, they still got out. Yeah. He didn't say the last time they talked to them. He, he didn't say <laughs> the last time they went to Florida and they liked it. Uh, that's kind of the, the answer is like both his record's pretty good. And Hey, if more people like him, that must mean that he's, they don't mention that he like won Florida by 20 points. That whole argument that DeSantis makes in every interview, which I think is fair. They don't know the Florida win record or anything. They just know that he seems to be pretty, he seems to make fewer people angry than Trump does. Right. They know a guy who who loved moving down there. That, that, you hear that a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's like all politics. It feels very much uh, less about issues and more about electability. But I am curious about any of those issues, you know, because, you know, what it seems like from from the midterms and from like polling, the DeSantis's anti-woke crusade is not really hitting in the way that Donald Trump's, hey, you tried and you want to privatize Medicare and Medicaid, like Mm -hmm. how that's going to be countering him. I mean, not not that they're even on equal footing anymore. I don't know what the fuck we're talking about because Trump's blowing him out of the water. But like, Mm -hmm. still, what is your sense about that? Like woke stuff? Did 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 you eat Skittles and trigger people (laughs) because of the new packaging or what? I haven't seen the new packaging. Is Dylan Mulvaney on it, or what's the deal? Oh yeah, no, it's like it's like a yeah. There was a sponsor. It was a partnership with Glad organization. It's oh, cute. Okay, it's okay. like it's like little little kids have like Black Trans Lives Matter um, things. Anyway. Oh Lindsay, okay, no, I didn't see that. I did. I did too. notice like very little Bud Light being drunk. I mean, lots of like Bush Light had just moved into that uh, for the light <laughs> beer things. All these places. Yes. Uh, but it, it, it's not that they think DeSantis is too anti woke. Uh, they just think that d- Trump can do that too. That Trump, wow. that Trump is going to be good on those on those issues too. Uh, DeSantis tried this tech, so him and his pack, they're not allowed to coordinate, but they do the same thing. DeSantis literally is riding on the bus and paid for by a super pack. And they tried something a month ago where they were saying, "Look, uh, d- try." It's based on Andrew, Andrew Kaczynski at CNN. Uh, Trump back in 2012 was very positive about trans woman competing for Miss Universe. Just oh, right, very good for her. It, uh, digression. <laughs> when we talk about like do tra- trans people, trans men, you know, women having advantage in like swimming. I'm not sure if trans women have advantage in beauty in like the beauty contest. <laughs> but that was kind of the premise. Like the, he, they're ruining beauty contests by competing in these in the in these contests. And the they ran like Taylor, uh, the same as talking about it. It didn't click. Like no one thought the reason that uh, my kid in school is getting this, you know, book I don't like is because of Donald Trump saying something 10 years ago, but Trump, you said it, I mean, like not just social security, but, um, the, uh, 
they were trolling during the fair. They were handing out when DeSantis walking around the, the pork booth, especially like mm-hmm. these flyers about DeSantis voting against like egg subsidies and voting against mm. ethanol and voting and it'd be terrible for farmers. It'd be terrible for ag. That was one of the arguments they were they were making about him. It's 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 much more. You know what Trump was like, and and honestly, it's kind of left out of the coverage because it's it, the coverage is determined what the guys are talking about. But like Trump was really popular with farmers. Trump's like trade right. war with mm-hmm. China was really popular with farmers and no one else did that. Like Ron DeSantis can talk about yeah. China now, but a thing that Trump said in the, I'm almost, you know, not kicking myself, but I should have put it more in my coverage is he didn't talk a lot, but he mostly talked about how great I was for you, for you farmers. Not everyone in Iowa was a farmer, but, but the economy runs on it. Like when, when, when farmers are losing money, the whole state suffers. That's a lot of his argument. And there's nothing you can really do. I mean, Mike Pence could say I was part of that administration, but they basically say, yeah, shut up. And then yeah. they're like, get what happens. Like I we mean, don't, in, don't, take, don't take, give you credit for that. I mean, in that sense, I think DeSantis really does feel like, like a soccer mom that decided mm-hmm. to run for fucking president uh, based on like, yeah, a book that, you know, was in their kid's library. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like mm. a, a big little lies character. It's just like, <laughs> this is what everyone cares about. It's like, mm. no, honey, nobody cares about that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's, it's in like, they don't disagree with DeSantis. They're just like, that's why is that the difference? We try. It's right. like, like, Trump like can do that stuff, that running stuff, here. yeah, that stuff feels like window dressing on like a, what should be a lot broader of a platform. Yeah, they trust him on that. And also, he moved right when he was president, and people like that. It's like, oh, he, he agrees with me. Just there, there are progressives who didn't like Joe Biden. They now do because of some things that he, they thought he wouldn't do that he did. And there's a lot of Republicans and um, social conservatives. Now, there's individual social conservatives in Iowa, like like kingmaker religious figures who really are tired of Trump and want DeSantis to be the nominee. But they were defending Trump for four years. I mean, they, they've only turned on Trump because they're irritated by how he keeps like getting into trouble and fighting with the governor. Yeah. But if, if you ask them, like, hey, who ended Roe v. Wade? Well, that's Trump. Like, like, DeSantis can't say that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing is, it's, I think it's, it's not that it's over. Um, it's just that they, they don't see a reason why, like, Trump would be worse than that. Again, the only thing they tried was the trans beauty pageant thing. It just, like, didn't make sense to people. Like, yeah. you could tell them, like, about the Leah, Leah Thomas uh, swim thing. People were aware of that. People who care about that issue negatively were aware, aware of that. But you try, when Republicans, try, when DeSantis tried to tie it to Trump, they're like, what are you talking about? I just saw him on TV making fun of Leah Thomas. He's like had all these insults that he was flinging at her. He's, right. he's like, who, who, why, yeah, what oh, are you, he's got the transphobia it? covered. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. And I realize we're talking about this on a purely political level when all of these, right. in my opinion, people are uh, heinous and awful. But I did want to speak of someone else who's trying to set himself apart, which is Vice President, former Vice President Mike Pence. This is a very funny exchange that, Dave, I don't know if you've seen, but he's Mm. basically asked by someone in the audience, um, why did you commit treason on January 6th? And to anyone Mm. in the real world, um, your brain is like, what is that? It sounds like he hates Mike Pence, but he, what? I thought he didn't vote for an alternate slate of electors. He, you know, did what he's supposed to do according to the Constitution. But this guy, (laughs) which is, (laughs) if you watch, like, I'll play the clip and Everyone in the audience thinks that he's that they're, he's like being mean to Mike Pence, um, mm. calling like I guess I guess what ugh, ignore what I'm saying. Let's just watch it because <laughs> he says, "Why did you commit treason by not standing with Donald Trump?" Um, my question is this: Why did you commit treason on January 6th and not stand with President Trump? So they're booing him. He said, why did you commit treason? Which, of course, they don't like because they're at a Mike Pence like talk rally right now. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if they fully heard the last part of it, which is by not standing with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Keep going. Shut your buddy. No. You shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the sucks, sucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's a fair question. Look, come on. <laughs> people. That's why I came. <laughs> No, I got you. I'll answer your question. I'll answer your question. Look, the truth is that uh, states conduct our elections. What? They do. And once Iowa certifies the elections when they're questions, you can go to court. Our campaign in 2020 had more than 60 lawsuits in courts around the country. There were also states that conducted recounts under the law. 
But when all that was done, if you read Article 2 of the Constitution, which I re recommend to you very respectfully. Boo! Article 2 says once the states send their electoral votes to the Congress of the United States, the Vice President, as President of the Senate, will preside over a joint session of Congress. And what it says is at that joint session, the electoral votes shall be open and shall be counted. It doesn't say may. It doesn't say you can send them back to the states. It doesn't say you can reject votes. Even though my former running mate and uh, many of his outside lawyers told me that that authority was there, I knew there never was. I mean, look, there's almost no idea more on american than the notion that any one person could pick the American president. I mean, the American... Okay, there was some applause after that, but boo, more like article poo, not article two. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, nice. <laughs> so there he was, uh, and he's, again, re regurgitating his line, but basically, you know, the, the correct line, as if, David, you could talk a little bit about this, and I wanted, though, your thoughts on the indictment, yeah. but as if Pence wasn't also kind of seeing if he could ignore article poo and just you know try and you know send or send electors back to the states yeah so that was at the des moines register soapbox that was a a questioner who i heard i, I couldn't find him afterwards somebody somebody said he's kind of put up to it or democrats are, were planning him but the, pence is off book on that question pence has answered that question a billion times i've seen him in iowa get version of the question ruder more polite um he actually like there was a moment i don't know five minutes later where a Carrie Lake staffer who was at the, at the thing asked how, how he felt about Tucker Carlson ending his career. Like he's very, he's a pain sponge. He's very used to getting trolled. Um, yes. But, that, but, <laughs> but he, like you asked about the indictment. I was like, so two things happened during the fair, the Hunter Biden special counsel announcement yes. happened. Which and, are we, or were they happy or mad or didn't know how to feel and had to wait? Well, that, that was what was interesting that in real time. So the first, it happened when Francis Suarez, who's the mayor of Miami and like, you know, lower tier candidate, not sure if I'll make the debate. He gets the question. It had just happened. He's like, oh, I think a lot of Republicans are going to be happy about this. And it was very clear in 10 minutes that they were not happy about this. <laughs> uh, so like, every other Republican who got the question was on script and saying, well, it's all a sham. It's all something right. trying to distract from it. Um, the, the, the Georgia indictment, they said the same thing. They said, oh, it's weaponization of, of the political process. The, exceptions being Asa Hutchinson. Also, you're finding this pattern. Guys who were expressing opinions that maybe some non-Republicans agree with like, are doing really badly. He was saying, yeah, I've been literally saying that Trump should not run for a long time, uh, that, he sh I, that he should not run if this happens. Uh, but, but it just kind of, it, it, it processed in very smoothly, it just, just went into the system, it came out, nothing changed. The Republican reaction was, you <laughs> remain very angry about the Hunter Biden Republican situation. Brain. Just, <laughs> yeah. yep. You nope. remain no, very angry no. about, yeah. Sort nothing of changed. entered the orbit and exited like a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so they processed without, the only surprise were, you know, a couple of the guys going on record to talk about it, but they, they also were really tired of talking about Trump. I mean, you, uh, whatever you think of these candidates who are running, nothing they're saying that's not about Trump is making any news. They can do a 20 minute interview and they'll, they'll get asked about one Trump scandal. That's what makes the headline here. If you look at uh, TV in Iowa, TV news, that's what's all in the news. If they, when they respond to Trump, uh, kind of their, you know, you could say it's their fault <laughs> because they're just good letting them get away with it. Uh, but I, I went through, and I could be a little bit too cynical sometimes because, you know, you're in the news, you're swimming through this. It, it's something that maybe people just heard about sounds old to you. But they made the choice to say, yeah, this stuff that happened. I noticed by, um, so like the Hunter Biden news was Friday and I was with DeSantis at a rally in um, a town north of the fair where he brought it up in like 15 minutes in the speech, he brought it up and he said, yeah, it's a sham. And then he goes to the state fair the next day, never mentions it. No one at these... Um, I, I, I should be clear, there's the, Governor Reynolds had these 30-minute interviews, and then this, they, if they wanted to, could go to the White Register for 20-minute speeches. No one was mentioning the Hunter Biden thing in any of that stuff. Uh, they just yeah. kind of moved on immediately. They did, And they didn't mention Trump unless they were asked about it. But yeah, it didn't change anything. I mean, these, yeah. these big developments, I mean, I, I remember I'd you know, spend some time at the fair and then see what was on TV, and it was breaking historic, uh, we've never seen this before, unprecedented coverage of the Trump stuff. At the fair, I was like, Oh, that's still happening. 
Yeah. Let me fry, let me deep fry this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they just let it, it wash wasn't, over. It wasn't changing minds. Yeah. But I think one and and Lola, please jump in with with thoughts because I mean, as someone who's covered cults, you know, I, I don't. I'm sure you've covered also versions of the MAGA cult, and maybe you want to talk about. We could talk about this, but it seems like no one is running to the right of Trump. Right. Like if you said, oh, I don't like Greg Abbott's, you know, razor wire buoys. Why don't we put migrants in the river and tie them? Like, you know what I'm saying? No one's like going saying psycho stuff, which is how Trump got coverage in the first place to say, obviously, he's also Donald Trump. But the one person who was there running as an ostensible Democrat somehow who has been saying something a little bit different and kind of running on it is RFK Jr., Um, you know, talking about the vaccine, uh, Chinese and uh, Jews are immune. So I'm half immune, even though I got COVID, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and he's got he's a Kennedy. So he's got this like he's attracting kind of I mean, he's definitely getting pulling more headlines. Did you see any RFK people or talk to them about uh, about his candidacy? You know, yeah, thanks for asking about that, because he, he, he hasn't gotten a lot of the coverage. Uh, but his crowd was, again, at the Des Moines Register soapbox, his crowd was, a, I'd say, about the biggest, I mean, more than Penn's, more than Haley, biggest one I saw. Really? Uh, the VEC was, yeah, it was it, hundreds of people. So you're, you're speaking on this stage, people can sit in front of the stage, and then people can spill out and just stand and listen to you. And he, he had a big crowd. It was a 20-minute speech. He didn't take questions. Seven minutes of the speech, I'm not trying to make fun of it, because the thing with Kennedy is that he's just approaching the whole campaign like a podcast, right? He's just talking about what he thinks is interesting. People <laughs> who like him like him. People who think he's, he's crazy think he's crazy. He's not trying. I would say he's not trying That's to win people. That's what this show is. Yeah, but he's not, he's not like saying, well, today my message is this. Yeah, right. But um, he shows up like he's seven minutes. stream. Yeah, he pulled um, Dennis Kucinich, his campaign manager, on the stage, and he had him hold up for seven minutes this chart of uh, pipelines that – the governor wants to build here. And he said, Dennis is kind of my Vanna White. <laughs> he just, so he just had the speech that could be about anything, be about these pipelines he wants to stop. Uh, and I did see RFK fans. I did, uh, I met, uh, one of them drove five hours from South Dakota with his wife to see him. He was a Trump guy in 2020. He's an RFK guy now. Um, I didn't meet many Democrat. Every, I would say um, I met a couple of Democrats who just were kind of worried about 2024 and Biden. Uh, right. But most of the RFK people I talked to were in that zone who they, they hated the establishment. They loved Trump. They didn't love, I should say, they, they, they voted for Trump at least once. And now they right. are for RFK, which is what I heard. Right. And you saw, uh, I mean, the biggest news he made is he talked to MS, um, NBC shortly after his speech and got asked about abortion and seemed to have never thought about when he'd want to like put a limit <laughs> on when you could get one and yeah. then reverse to completely said he misunderstood the question. It was like classic RFK because... He could he go he can go on a great length about things he finds interesting and then a major question that is facing the next no president answer. he's like oh uh, well he just was like riffing he just said well three three months sounds fine uh, as soon as it's a viable life it's not it's not a viable uh, baby baby is not viable yeah, yeah that's not <laughs> anyway but <laughs> and, but like how can you be the if medical only. freedom guy and not do that? it was it was very <laughs> classic RFK of just he's interested in what he's interested in and if you right. try to he's get like, him well else, what like, what race yeah. is the baby <laughs> you know because they develop it different so the Chinese babies are ready at two months um <laughs> well, he didn't, he, thank God he didn't go into more detail now that I think about it <laughs> and it was good that he just was confused. So the diehard Trumpers, are you ba- you're basically seeing they're just they're not affected by the indictments really at all. Is, is that kind of yeah? They're either yeah they either are well I'd say they're people who are like bring them up bring it on more indictments. Um, this is a this is awesome. The deep state hates them. People who just don't care and people who say I don't care, but maybe my friend who you know votes for votes Republican but doesn't love Trump, he's going to care. Yeah, that's right. kind of, those are the three big that most people fit into among Republicans. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, when somebody does have an attachment to a belief or like a, a, a cult like figure, someone with a cult following or, or a literal cult leader, we do see that often they'll just double down on their beliefs. So it makes sense mm-hmm. that there are lots of people who are just like, sounds great. Yeah. Bring it on more. Oh, yeah. He's being persecuted. You know, it's like the classic. Uh, oh, he's literally mythology. choking me to death right now. Okay, keep going. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. Ah, oh, no, I'm dead, actually. <laughs> but it's really interesting to hear that there are people who are now concerned about his electability because, 
you know, like that could actually make a difference. And I didn't think it would, to be honest. Yeah. I absolutely. Just, a, just a little. Yeah. It's, it shows in the polls and um, it, it, look, I mean, so there are other politicians who've gotten in legal trouble and their and their diehard fans say like, awesome. Like Marion, Marion, Marion Barry got, went to jail, came back, became mayor. At least one Louisiana governor familiar with like was right. indicted, came back, won. It was it just you can be like a lovable rascal for your base. So, so that's why I think I don't want to get too like too pompous about the, the media the media covers this. But when I see the we've never seen anything like this before, I, I think I, not, we, we have though. I mean, there are people who when they get in trouble, their supporters say they're only doing it because they're so afraid of him. You didn't hear yeah. it a lot with right. Hillary. You heard it a little bit with Hillary. Right. You heard people who said. They're just going after her because she's a powerful woman and, 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 and they hate her. Um, and that they justified everything. There were less of them than there are people who believe this about Trump. But when I hear that, I'm not like, oh, my gosh, how could I, I'm like, yeah, no, that's a I can process that information. It's just surprising that the, to these other Republicans because they've been saying, yeah, can't you feel that way? And maybe maybe want to support me or someone who's more electable. They, and they for most Republican voters, that's not how they process it. They're like, yeah, I He's perfectly electable if, they, if we just stop the machines. We just count yeah. the paper ballots. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, I draw the comparison to Bernie. You already did. It is nice yeah. to hear Republicans are semi-concerned about electability. They're doing the thing <laughs> that was like, you know, oh, I love Bernie, but will he, you know, mm -hmm. will he be, is he electable and all that BS? Um, and so I think about, yeah, if, he, if Bernie served a term, uh, I would, yeah, I'd be like, no, this is my boy ride or die mm. for life you know i don't care how many how many like fires he builds wrong in a vermont chimney or like a vermont <laughs> fireplace i like or you know like i don't care whether he does like the stacking in pride he does like a square or trying the point is this i definitely go to bat for him so i get that um the problem is on the left our boys are never gonna win because fascism also just has capitalism in cahoots with them they just always work together. Whereas the socialists, we don't got the capitalists on our side. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's where <laughs> that's where things get a little different. Um, any final thoughts or, or uh, thoughts on that, Dave? Well, I was just thinking, yeah, if Bernie had given a speech during the state fair, then then there were, we would have cut away to the empty empty core dog booth waiting for Trump. But I was thinking <laughs> that you mentioned the Biden reaction to Maui, and I, I thought the same thing. When Biden, who is president, <laughs> like makes remarks about something, they often don't make as much news as Trump getting in trouble about something. And this right. uh, this Maui controversy. So he said no comment when Bloomberg asked about the rising death toll. Uh, Bloomberg, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he commented. The president commented on it on um, today's the fifteenth on the tenth and sent resources and just people didn't know about it exactly. Uh, and, exactly. And so there was more attention because Fox News exists, and, and as much as conservatives kind of feud with it the Fox news coverage of this was that Biden made this mistake and then Trump put out a video hitting Biden for it. And yeah, capital in the form of, of news corp really wanted the Trump story. The Trump story is as much as conservatives dislike the mainstream media. It's great for the mainstream media, the coverage that he gets, the domination he gets, I'm covering the story and trying to find different angles, but you can't avoid it. There's bigger, there's a bigger circus and more interest around Trump than Trump anybody. And that's hard to extricate me. for these Republicans too. I mean, Dave, right. you you saw my MSNBC special in the, the like the yeah. the December of 2019, before the election and before the pandemic, when it was is like the dead of winter. It it airs. Thank you for watching it. But what's what's what it made me realize was number one, nobody is like buying long form shows that are like deep dives or funny uh, or mm -hmm. different when you have Donald Trump running for president. Right. And when you have, obviously, the pandemic. But this man has deprived me and many other journalists and correspondents and hosts and creatives from just fucking getting any airtime because he mm -hmm. is just he he has taken all the air out of yeah. the room. He is endlessly bankable. No matter if you hate him or you love him, everyone has Trump derangement syndrome. And I understand we have to. It's been indicted now the fucking fourth time with 19, 18 others. We yeah. have to pay attention. This is the find out part of the fuck around. And I've been <laughs> waiting for this. I was last, I was going to say about the Fonnie Willis, uh, uh, the indictments is like, it's nice to see the crimes laid out. You're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Government 
for explaining that there was even a crime on the books because these motherfuckers have been doing this for so long. What do you mean? And I'm so glad that it's illegal to try and coerce an elected official into like violating the state constitution. Like, thank you. you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, and this is more legitimate stuff than there were periods in 2015 where just Trump would, you know, insult Rosie O'Donnell and that would overwhelm everyone else's campaign. If you, you have this thing in common with Republican candidates, they try to, to come up with a different policy and, uh, or any, any ideas, any policy, anything new, and it doesn't get the coverage with Trump. I've seen this. I'm not yeah. going to complain about my traffic, but you know, I, I interviewed Mike Pence a couple of weeks ago and I'd like, we talked about Trump at the top, but it was mostly other topics and it did way worse when yeah. traffic than when Trump, when he mm-hmm. reacts to something Trump did, he could, I think he's given the same answer about January 6 a million times. It does yes. way better than he talks about any of his policies. And that is, I mean, we solve it all here. There's a lot going into that, but it started in 2015 with Trump being very bankable content. And that's you know, because and Mike CBS News talking about it. Yeah, is an old hotel Bible, just a boring fucking saltine of a Bible sitting there. There's not. There's not even a page ripped out to have rolled a blunt. Like it. He's he's a fucking. He's boring as shit. And you're a great <laughs> journalist and writer. So. Um, it's not you, it's him. You should have interviewed the fly. Uh, <laughs> get get their he, take on it. He did make that joke, I think. He, he, he He's now joked about the fly thing. But that is the classic Penn story. <laughs> like, what's the most memorable thing about a debate where, but if you ask him, he did great. It was it was the fly did. No, it's I don't feel great about, th- about this as, as a topic. I mean, I do. <laughs> my, my inner Neil Postman and worrying about that we're amusing ourselves to death comes out where, yeah. It's not great if people choose the entertainment over any of the function. And then, you know, when there is a crisis, when, like, there are floods, there are wildfires, they're like, hey, who do I call the government to get this fixed? <laughs> like, uh, there is, like, the connection that you have with the, the stuff the government actually affects. Um, it should be covered more. So I, I try. Absolutely. Uh, but at the state fair, yeah, it was the, 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 the Trump sizzle overwhelmed everything. I honestly think some candidates did pretty good at introducing themselves to people despite that. But we spent this time talking about Trump. They did. Um, as of all the state fairs I went to, I mean, I think in a week we're going to remember less of what these Republicans did individually than, than anyone I've covered because the story was, well, what did, what did Trump do? How did they react to him? Right. And hours they spent walking around well, let's, in the let's hot imagine, sun, and that's what they will remember. Let's imagine, last question, let's imagine a world without Trump. I know it's very difficult, but imagining a world without Trump, you know, next week, I guess, is the first Republican primary debate. Trump obviously is going to be there, but let's, like, it is a time for these candidates. It's a time for the Republican Party. It's a time, I mean, what do you make of this party? I mean, and potentially given the candidates that you see, Tim Scott, Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley, you know, like, what it, What do you see as the future of this party, if not with the guy that effectively did implode it. Well, the R- Ramaswamy is one version of the future. I think he's, because uh, he's, his name comes up a lot with Republicans in Iowa, and some are convinced he's, he's going to be, he's going to come second, he's going to he's, he's go all the, or maybe not go all the way, but that he's, he's a real comer. Some who support other candidates say, once there's some more scrutiny, he's going he's gonna to fall. Mm-hmm. But talking to everybody and being, um, having, ideas that no one else has articulated that sounds like you can't do. I think the important thing too, and Bernie, I'm not making the conflation, but Bernie would talk about something and the media reaction would often be, but how do you pay for that? How yes. can you possibly do that? Yes. Congress, you can't do that as president. Yes. Uh, people like to hear that. People are really frustrated with the idea that government just can't do like, can't fix any of the things that they're, that they've been heard about because well, it's, uh, there's norms and there's a filibuster uh, and I really do. So there's the substantive place this comes from is people being very exhausted with being told nothing that nothing that they really would love to happen can ever happen. So the candidate who says, "Hey, I figured out a way, just get in there and fire ten thousand federal workers," you can write the that would be hard story, <laughs> or you can or you can see why people say, "Yeah, that sounds awesome." How come nobody's tried that before? I think yeah. the the more um, for Republicans, just the guy who's going to go in and and do something that not just pissing off the media to piss off the media, but something that really irritates like the norm, the norm keepers in DC. I don't know when that would stop because every, you know, the government is large. It has lots of power. It has lots of, it, 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 lots of money. And it's not like yeah, they're outsiders. getting more uh, happier about, about the size of this thing. They want somebody, yeah, the outsider who goes and smashes it. And 
that's kind of the Ramaswamy pitch is Trump did that last time, but he's been president. We saw it works. I'm the new Trump, the new outsider. Mm-hmm. I think it's more likely that we'll see both, you know, new Trumps and also people who kind of, like the Matt Gateses who came up uh, in Trump's shadow and copied the stuff that worked about that. Yes. I just think it's going to continue Marjorie to be Green. re... Yeah, the Marjorie Greens. I think it's just going to be the most exciting thing for Republicans, um, except for that occasionally there's a crisis and you're like, oh, I'm really glad we have our Republican, like our Brian Kemp, uh, uh, who's not a moderate, but or like our governor who's like not chasing a crazy thing and he's just going to like sign this bill. Like, <laughs> or yeah. he's going to like tour my town after the... After the, the uh, the, fi- the fire and, and bring resources. I like that instead. I mean, I some just, of that I, happens, but only in a crisis. Yes, absolutely. I guess final thought from me yeah. on this is that I wish Mike Pence, <laughs> not to sound Nancy Pelosi, like we need a strong Republican Party, but like mm-hmm. I'm someone who does see a difference between the Mike Pences and the Donald Trumps. There's a difference mm-hmm. between the people who were indicted on this fucking harebrained scheme and tried to like, yeah, completely subvert the will of the voters. And the dude who was like, nah, man, Article 2 of the Constitution, that's what it says, and that's what I did. Like, that's a huge difference, right? It's the difference between authoritarianism and not, uh, as much as Trump tried. So, like, I just wish it were not in such a, God, I don't know. I I mean, I, I, like, I wish for the party's sake, I wish for the future of the country's sake, they could pull this back, but, like, Mm-hmm. I blame W. Let's just blame W. Bush and Cheney and we'll be done with the day. It's a good uh, default. <laughs> yeah. good default. Dave Weigel. Republicans will help you blame Bush. They hate him now, too. So Exactly. exactly. Bipartisan <laughs> agreement. Yeah. Well, look, and that, but the Democrats haven't. Oh, we could talk forever about this. Democrats <laughs> yeah. haven't capitalized on that. Oh, my God. Um, Dave Weigel, you're wonderful. Everybody read his writing on Semaphore. Um, what else? What else you got going on? Anything? You want to plug that's the, that's the main thing i'm, I'm gonna head to atlanta this week for the final republican kind of gathering before the debate then they head to the debate so yeah at, at twitter and blue sky i'm on those that's mostly where i share my stuff nice. uh and I, I i and semaphore.com there's a newsletter it's it's free which people seem to like like a newsletter where i go around the country and cover politics so it's all my stuff there well, stay well stay safe uh there must be a lot of a lot of Rona um, in around that the, ho- <laughs> the hog tent. Is that what it was? Um, Day Weigel, everybody. And Lola Blanc still here. Still Lola, here. Thank-, thank you for being here and for sticking around because there was a moment and we talked about Vivek Ramaswamy. So let's get into our final segment, our fun segment, an episode, an edition of The Cringies. Okay, so... Just picking up where we left off, Vivek Ramaswamy, who I guess is an upstart in the Republican Party. I don't know enough about him. I apologize. I should probably, I should probably do, don't make me research him. But um, <laughs> he was, he has captured my eye because at the Iowa or the Iowa at the I Iowa oh, Iowa Iowa. <laughs> in my mind, I said Ohio, but it is Iowa. <laughs> At the Iowa State Fair, um, after he was interviewed by Kim Reynolds, Governor Kim Reynolds there, he broke into uh, a rap, uh, uh, rapping to Eminem's Lose Yourself. Is this Lose Yourself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think he, he definitely lost himself. Here we go. Down the whole crowd goes so loud. loud. He opens his mouth, mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking out. Everybody's choking <laughs> now. The clock's run out. Wow. Time's up. Over plow. Back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Okay, nobody's dancing, but there's a lot <laughs> of cameras. Part. There's a lot of cameras. He he's just like, this is my moment. Oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> that, that was a song that's a song i was singing so there's a uh, there's something very funny about this sort of like i don't know i guess like brown asian model minority f- figure which he is more than that i don't mean to say that that that's but like you know 
Wajah had a Lee friend of the show, you know, called Nikki Haley like a tool of white supremacy. And he got, you know, there was like a massive firestorm. But it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, these like, like, especially women and people of color. It's like, bro, you look at your fucking party. But again, right. if you have like class privilege and you see yourself outside of that, whatever. But there is very something, something very funny about him rapping Eminem. <laughs> of all of the raps to rap, all that would be the rap, rap yeah. that you rap. Yeah. All the rappers. <laughs> Like, yeah, you guys have heard of this. Um, it's about being really successful, too, yes. right? Like, there's no better song for someone like him. You only got one shot. Exactly. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. So so that was a cringy moment from Iowa. Here's another cringy moment from Iowa. Uh, earlier, this is when Trump was actually, uh, this is not from the State Fair, but uh, about a week ago, Trump walked out um, for a rally, and his walkout song um, happen to be only in America, a song by Brooks and Dunn. Listen to the lyrics. Damn. Wait, what did he say? One might end up going to prison. One no. might be president. Oh. <laughs> Only in America. Uh, so I, true. So I love true. that that like even that as a song, just like as a song, like, oh, good old America. You know, you might just wind up in jail for the rest of your life. Or you might be president. Yeah, yeah, equal experiences. I love, totally. I love exactly. I love this. anything can happen in America. It's a great country. Like what? <laughs> um, but that is the song he walked out to, and that was they were very. I mean, it's country, so it was enunciated. That was very loud and clear, um, very awkward. And then finally, I don't know if you have heard of this guy Oliver Anthony. Have you heard of Oliver Anthony? I hadn't until today. So please enlighten okay. me. So Oliver Anthony, I'm like, fine. Oliver Anthony is clearly an op. Uh, he is an op <laughs> by the right wing and Elon Musk and somebody. Oh, no. But basically, he's a he is a singer. I don't know if he's also the slash songwriter, but he posted this video of himself um, singing a, a, a song called The Rich Men North of Richmond. I'm assuming Richmond, Virginia. And it kind of feels like it's like, oh, the the north like i a la like the like civil war north right. like unlike us confederates down here so there he he the song is richmond north of virginia here is part of it he is a now a viral sensation everyone's talking everyone on the right is talking about him he's the voice of america he's jd vance with a guitar take a look i wish politicians would look out for minors not just miners on an island somewhere Lord, we got folks in the street Ain't got nothing to eat And the whole beast milk and welfare well, God, if you're five foot three And you're 300 pounds Taxes ought not to pay For your bags of fudge rounds Young men are putting themselves Six feet in the ground Cause all this damn country does Is keep on kicking them down my mouth literally dropped open. <gasps> what <laughs> the fuck? So it, if you're five foot three and 300 pounds, you ought not to pay or taxes ought not to pay for your fudge rounds. What? <laughs> um. Wow. Really deep points he's making there. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they cared about miners instead of the miners on the <laughs> island. Obviously an Epstein reference. Like, so wow. the, just, okay. What, are we lyrically impressed as, as a musician? What do we think of, just give me a little like X factor. I mean, formerly known as Twitter X factor assessment here. He is telling a clear story. He's doing it concisely. Yeah. I know exactly his point of view. I'm going to give him a five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> don't agree with it but really crushing it uh he's a redhead too good for gingers um okay so he i just want to show you his twitter because i was like who is this oliver anthony dude right 
his Twitter profile, which is just him and his dog, blue check mark. His handle is <laughs> at, at ain't got a dollar. He joined Twitter or X in August of 2023. <gasps> this month, Stop. he's following Stop. two people and he has 327 thousand followers he's this totally a, an actor what is happening yes he's like who is this person right oh my god and everyone's like he's the voice this has become a big thing so like uh he is the voice of like america or some shit you know as if america isn't uh pe people who like their fudge rounds all right i was and gonna say i feel like it's the wrong uh, audience it's the wrong also, point to be making yeah, nobody wants – I don't want taxes to pay for my fucking fudge rounds. I want taxes to pay for health care. Health care. Yeah. Thank you. Or, I mean, or listen, just if like, you want to pay for my fudge rounds, I'll take it. That's but. fine. <laughs> um, um, okay, so we have three. These are these are our cringies. Who is the cringiest? We got Vivek Ramaswamy, Lose Yourself. We got Trump walking out to the song. And we have Oliver Anthony, a clear Elon Musk op who is definitely an actor and getting handsomely paid. Uh, I'm saying Oliver Anthony wins this game and fully a psyop, no question. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same. This guy here, I think, hmm. I think the other, first of all, I think Vivek Ramaswamy, I've watched that multiple times. I'm like, you know what? Good for you, dude. Like, just good for you. It's very cringy, but I don't know. You only got one shot. Do, do not, not miss your, miss chance, your chance to blow. Exactly. Um, so that's fine. He can do whatever he wants. Trump, you know, wasn't him. That was pretty goddamn funny. <laughs> but Oliver Anthony, like we, this is like, we need, you need to do an episode on like who's behind him. You know? I mean, there's a movie there somewhere. I'm there is a movie. Very fascinated now. Which speaking of which, uh, I just watched your movie, your film. Oh, thank pruning. you. Pruning. Thank you for watching. It's great. Thank it was you. really, really well done. It's incredible. Uh, can you just tell us before you bounce out of here, tell us more about you, pruning your work, where we can watch it? Yeah, yeah. Pruning is a short film that I uh, co-wrote and directed that is doing festivals right now. It stars Madeline Brewer from Handmaid's Tale. And it is about a political commentator who discovers that her rhetoric has inspired a mass shooting. And she has to deal with a psychological and horror-ish uh, scary, shall we say, consequences of that. Um, I also have a new song out called Trust Me, which is the same name as my podcast, which is about cults. Amazing. And are you, I mean, we get, well, I have to listen more, obviously, but are you a former, have you formerly been in a cult? Are you, have you gone down the slippery slope? Of, <laughs> was it Beanie Babies? It was Beanie Babies, wasn't it? Oh, that'd be so adorable. I <laughs> I grew up uh, I grew up Mormon, but then there was a self proclaimed prophet who then uh, manipulated my mother and then and me as well when I was a child. So that oh is God. episode one of our show. And my co host Megan also grew up in a highly culty uh, religious group that is now um, there's a lot of really uh, scary news coming out about them. So uh, we cover all that all that stuff on our show. Ugh, that's insane. You know what? I feel like it it makes me even angrier at people like Trump, but more so like the QAnon, you know, le asshole leaders. Like, you know, we I've always felt like and I don't know how you feel about the the I don't know how you feel about the Q stuff, but you know, <laughs> I feel like mainstream news, like it it's it's often left to podcasters or again like progressives or you know, alternative media if you want to call us that to cover some of the like most heinous things that have been committed in the service of like weird right wing and often religious cults, because it's almost seen as salacious to cover it like in mainstream news, but mm. like QAnon people and followers have killed their families. Yeah. Like multiple times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like their yeah, own yeah, yeah. babies. Yeah. Their own babies. Like, yeah, yeah. They stormed the Capitol. Ha ha. What about their fucking kids? They, who they murdered. You're just like, and we don't, no, no, we don't really cover it. <laughs> we don't talk about it. I mean, even that, even that guy who was just arrested for plotting to kill Biden was like espousing, you know, these sort of Marxist language, or, or as in calling him a Marxist and using right, right, right. these like conspiratorial um, language about him. This stuff is very, very dangerous. That is what my film is about. And um, it, it, honestly, yeah, it scares the fuck out of me. I like, I wish I understood the people who are doing it, but it's just 
like, I mean, that is one of the big questions that we explore on the podcast, but like, why, why are you doing this? And the answer just generally seems to be because they want power and they want clicks yeah. and they want money and they want to fuck with people. And yeah. for whatever reason that is, those are the motivations. And it's upsetting that we now live in a world where millions of people believe in things peddled by people like that. Yep. I love, I love the title too. I think trust me is kind of the, I mean, the biggest clue that someone is um, leading you down a primrose path, deceiving you is if they are the only source of information and you're exactly. the only person that they can trust. Everyone else is untrustworthy. You can only trust this one person, this one ideology. Um, that is how you know. And it have and it doesn't matter politic like politics aside. Any leader who says that shit to you, it's like, nope, no thanks. Anyway, um, Lola Blanc, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing your time. You're awesome. Everybody, listen to Trust Me. Um, pruning, how can people check it out if they don't go to a festival? Um, it will be online, hopefully, in the fall. And okay. I will be posting that on all my social media. And I'm Sweet. Ula Lola on Instagram. Ooh, la, Lola, O O H L A L O L A. Thank you so much. Take very good care. Come back. And thank you all, you beautiful people out in the ether. Um, just a few comments before we fuck off into the night. Um, Flutter by Dragon on Twitch. My mom is one of the crazies. They are all hyped about a military coup that's about to take place. Start a World War III stare, scare tactic event. God. <laughs> I'm sorry that that is your reality, and I hope that you can, I don't know, send her a message in a bottle or something and get through to her. That is rough. I usually make a joke about kids not calling their parents, but look, if I my parent were like that, I get it. I wouldn't necessarily want to always reach out. Um, let's see. Uh, Melanie Davis, the people who of Hawaii need their islands back and others to stop coming there and controlling it and the people. Agreed, Melanie, on YouTube. Um, let's see. Pranay on YouTube. White kids losing their inheritance to Trump. That's so true. All of the money that he's fundraising. Oh, Lord. Um, Dank Prol on Twitch. Didn't he bankrupt the farmers so we had to bail them out? Uh, I mean, we isn't that what a lot of like ag subsidies are? I mean, it's also supporting massive agribusiness over small farmers. I mean, even farmers, it's the same trope as coal miners, right? It's the same thing where it's like farmers know that their industries have been completely consumed by massive corporations, right? Uh, you know, and, and agribusiness. And it's not the same. You can't just say like, I'm supporting farming. Like you're saying, I'm supporting mining. Yeah, who's actually benefiting, right? Is it the small farmer? Is it someone who can actually make ends meet? Uh, and live the way that they're they've lived for generations, uh, or is it all funneling to again massive corporations? And usually it's the latter. But I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, all that China shit was like not good, right? Like I don't. It did not help people. <laughs> it did not. It was. It's all bluster though. He doesn't have to prove what he did or what he didn't do. He just says it, and it's fine. Remember how you had healthcare? What you tried to kill us? Remember the pandemic? No. Um, Daniel Lee, how you doing on YouTube says Trump is a real fascism. DeSantis is light indeed. Camperman 5000. Thanks for being a member. Lipstick on a 4-H prize winning pig. Yeah, that's what they all tried to do there and what they're trying to do with Trump. Um, Joel Eliza Leckio Johnson. Jo Joel, I think. I'm never going to get this right. Thank you for your super chat. There's no reason to fear responsibility. True maturity blossoms through experiences. I like that. Hef, thank you for your super chat. The fly was telling Mike Pence what to say. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, he was really lucid. It was the fly. Um, Christo Stefan says, we've all lost someone to the MAGA cult. Yeah, I I may have. I don't actually know. Um, Paper Dragon. Oh, dang, the Chinese have expedited bir birth. Yeah, they have. If you follow the Jewish uh, fetus. I think it's okay to make fun of RFK Jr.'s voice, even though I know it's a medical condition, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm something I can do. And he's also peddling a lot of lies, so I don't feel bad. Don't at me about this. Um, Todd Roy on YouTube, only in America can this man not be in prison. Uh, 
Lily Alara, thank you for your super, says, super chat, says, we gingers disown that mofo. <laughs> um, and thank you to everyone. Uh, let's start with the fart song. But before we get there, I did want to remind everybody that we're going to do the bonus bish on Thursday today, not Friday, because I'm out of town. But Friday, bonus bish, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. So it's a Thursday. Look out for that on Patreon and on uh, your Patreon feed. Again, if you're a patron, you get a special little icon. It's a rainbow. It's gorgeous. It's your own little private uh, RSS feed. And it's amazing. And with that, I want to thank all of the people, big, big tippers, new patrons at $10 or more and Twitch subs. Thank them with the fart song. What up, dog? Um, I almost went into a Matt Lee rap. Okay, wow. Thank you, new patrons. Robert Roberto Vera. I can't believe I tried to anglicize your name, Roberto. Thank you so much. And we just got a new patron. Paul, thanks so much for becoming a patron. Paul, you're amazing. That fart's dedicated to you, bud. Thank you to Peg Junk, who resubscribed uh, for one month of Tier 1, saying, no commercials now, much better. Yes, that's why. Thank you so much. And Artist Sketch, thank you for cheering 100 bits. Thanks for live stream, Franny. No, thank you. Willie Gus resubscribed for one month of Tier 1. Thank you, Willie. Just Czar resubscribed for one month of Tier 1. Thank you. It's 29 months subscribe. Calm Like a Bomb resubscribe. Artist Sketch resubscribe. Sammy Lynn, the Kind Dragon resubscribe. Thank you so much. And the Iron Bussy. I think I'm pronouncing that right. That's very funny. Resubscribed. Also, you guys are great. And thanks to Paige Omek, to Maximilian Inhoff, and to Andy Vasoyan who make the show happen. We stream every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, except for the bonus bitch, which is on Friday, except for this week, which is on Thursdays. And follow the show on all the socials, Bituation Pod on Twitter, Bituation uh, Room on Instagram and TikTok. And remember, fight the power, fuck the patriarchy, and don't just bitch about it, be about it. Mm -hmm.